What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you're tuned in from. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? I hope you're doing well. These markets are providing this opportunity. I'm just closing out this window so we can dive right on into it because we got to talk about these gains that we're seeing over the last 24 hours. Aerodrome still absolutely blasting off. Uh, let me move. I got to move some stuff on my screen. Sorry about that. We got Aerodrome absolutely blasting off. Proppy, P R O. Absolutely blasting off as well. ICP melted faces over this last week, over 70% up in this last week. Alex Labs, I just layered into this two days ago, uh, and it's uh, absolutely uh, showing some nice movement. We got Fetch AI starting to rally back up again. CeeLo, uh, you know, we've got a lot of things going on in this market, so the question is going to be, how are you preparing to ride the absolute dragon that's coming in this market? Yes, we have seen some gains. But those gains do not mean that it is over. It means that it has just begun because we've had a little bit of consolidation. We just had a little bit of a sell-off on Bitcoin, and it's now it's coming back up to the upside. Everybody in chat right now, let's do a roll call. If you are here, if you are tuned in, if you are alive, if you can hear my voice, type something in the live chat right now. Throw a one, throw a seven, throw 62 plus five. I don't care what it is. I want to see everybody uh, commenting here in the live chat so we can see who is tuned in. Who's ready to talk about these markets? My name's Kelly Kellum. Welcome to the BitLab Academy stream. And if you haven't yet, as you roll in, make sure you do your part in pushing that crypto price up by hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, ding the bell. We don't like asking for likes. It's something that keeps YouTube basically putting us favorably in the algorithm. So the more you engage with this channel, hitting that like button, subscribing, looking down below the video, if it doesn't say subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'll let YouTube know you like this content. So we got to talk about what's going on in this market because we're getting that push up, the, the, the sell-off back down. Uh, we see it on Ethereum. Look at this. Uh, sorry, Bitcoin. Nice move up. In formation, we've lost this trend signal line bouncing right where on this weekly VWAP. We also see the same thing on Ethereum. In formation, lost the trend signal line right on the weekly VWAP. Uh, ETH to Bitcoin is still setting up for lower, looking still bearish in terms of how Ethereum is performing compared to Bitcoin. Now, is this the end of the world? No, it's absolutely not the end of the world. It just means that we still have these last little elements of time to, pretend, uh, to really stack into our portfolio. Ondo also just been moving absolutely beautiful in this market. Are we on the right chart? Let me uh, come over here and reset this. Come over here to alts leave we got to go to the right charts there we go now that now now i'll have all my uh my ta and such and whatnot on here so we have this bull flag on ondo it did break out but it is this is looking a little more bearish than we we're seeing on bitcoin and ethereum we have to pay attention to this having these prices lose the trend signal line and also lose coming up rejecting and uh, basically losing this weekly view up it did amazing how the price look at this sitting right on the weekly view up sitting right on the weekly view up then losing it now potentially rejecting. Are we going to see some downside price action on Ondo? We also see on uh, AVAX, we've got this nice channel here that we are just dancing with the, the potential of having a further breakdown. Is this that last remnants of the whipsaw effect shaking people out of the market? My question to you right now is, are you going to be shaken out of this market or do you have conviction in the coins that you have been stacking into? And I also want to ask you a question because this is a community. It's not just me sharing my thoughts and perspectives on things. We need to grow together. So my question to you right now is, what is the, what is the last coin that you've basically added to your portfolio? Whether you DCA'd into something or something that you bought, let us all know. You might put something on our radar to see what we can do in here. We got 212 people in the room. So again, everybody... As we get this going, show some love, hit that like button, subscribe, and let's talk about what's going on in these markets. We got a couple news stories that we are going to cover really quick and some numbers that we can set the stage. And then we're going to be talking about a bunch of different altcoins as well as Bitcoin and what is next, what is coming. Are you prepared? It's all about the data. To be prepared is to look at the data. And we're also, by the way, I want to call this out at the beginning of the show. We are giving away $100 USDT. All you need to do to get access to that $100 USDT is to go to the BitLab Academy page. I'm trying to go to it right now. Go to the BitLab Academy page and then the pinned comment, this comment right here, and I'm going to pull it up. 
this comment right here. If you retweet this tweet, that's going to enter you to win. Uh, I just put it in the live chat as well. Retweet this tweet. This will get you entered to win $100. I'll be doing this at the, at the end of the show, so stick around. Uh, I'll basically be doing a random comment picker, a random retweet picker from here. So hit this retweet and hit the like button right here. You will be entered to win $100. So we got to talk about it. I mean, look at this, 823,000. You guys realize this? 823,000 Bitcoin and all of these ETFs. Now, of course, if we separate out, if we subtract this 342,000 from Grayscale, which is what we've seen a lot of the outflows from, and we can see it here over the last week too, minus 7,000, minus 6,000, minus 5,500, minus 2,700, minus 5,000. But at the end of the day, all these other ETFs that are just sucking it up, we've got basically 243,000, over 1% of Bitcoin is held by BlackRock, 139,000 by Fidelity. We're seeing massive institutional interest in what's going on. In fact, we have such incredible, let me pull this up. This is just gonna make you all smile. Hit the like button for Jim Cramer finally flipping the script and saying that he likes Bitcoin. Tell me that this is not something that, I mean, it's kind of shocking if you ask me, and it's wonderful because I hope this doesn't mark a local top because we know Jim Cramer is the inverse indicator the in the market. Significant wealth creation opportunities that others already have. Okay, now we are big fans of Bitcoin. Uh, we are not against it. We think it's a great storehold of value. Do you think it can be, go back to where people thought that at one point uh, it would be used as a currency? So we want to drive utility to Bitcoin, and we've got multiple ways to do that. We do, with our Lightning Network initiative, C equals, have an opportunity to use Bitcoin as a currency, but we're looking at the multitude of ways, a store of value, stealth. The big story there is that Jim Cramer, who at one point said, I would not touch that with a 10-foot pole or whatever. He said, I think uh, I want to stay away from Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just like... It's so wonderful to see, uh, uh, you know, this. He, if you think of him like a barometer for the greater public and the traditional-minded people out there, it's interesting that now all of a sudden he's a fan of Bitcoin when in the past he said we uh, would not touch crypto in a million years. Of course, we do know from the past, back in 2021, he did own Bitcoin and he did sell for some profit. So what, what narrative is he trying to shape now? That's the question we all got to ask ourselves. Now, we're talking about those ETFs. I just brought it up, but we can also see uh, this is a basically everybody wants to know the reasons for the pump up to 71. And the reason why we want to know the reasons is because we want to know if it's going to be a sustained pump, if it can carry forward. And at the end of the day, we are going to be looking at data and adapting our analysis on a daily basis based on new uh, new inputs of, of information that, that can signal what's going on and more, most importantly, what are the big players in the space doing? Because I want to follow what they're doing, not what they're saying. So when we see here, futures market, remember, some people think it's all ETFs, other people think it's futures. Let's be honest, it's going to be a combination of the two. But we did see, we're seeing a lot, right? you see right here, a uh, billion dollars in open interest got added in the past couple hours. This was yesterday as we pushed up. It's most likely this leverage that pushed us higher. Now, great. So there's there's a you know a lot of leverage that's going into the market, but that creates an opportunity for that whipsaw effect and have very quick sell-offs. Remember, we still have the CME futures gap down to sixty-four thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollars. So there's still a possibility that we do get a washout to the downside to to close that gap. About 85, 90 percent people will debate. But over, you know, over 80%, 85 to 90% of those CME futures gaps do get closed. Now, there's been a lot of bullish news for Bitcoin, uh, you know, and I'm sure you've seen it on some of the other channels, but the London Stock Exchange announced its plan to introduce a market for Bitcoin and Ethereum exchange traded notes. This decision opens the door to professional investors in Europe and signifies the growing institutional acceptance. The, the story here is not that they're doing this. The story here is that that this type of narrative and these types of major global players like BlackRock, like Fidelity, now like the London Stock Exchange, it puts these financial products in terms of on the traditional side, but also the crypto side, the general awareness of crypto and Bitcoin and Ethereum, it starts giving them more and more legitimacy in the eyes 
of those uh, players, the professional players within the eco, uh, the the financial ecosystem, as well as once you start seeing these things traded on the London Stock Exchange, even the mom and pops and the retail start saying, "Well, man, if this is if there's products traded around this this uh, technology on this thing that I trust, even though they shouldn't, uh, like the London Stock Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange, it starts giving more breadth of uh, liquidity." B R E A. ETH, breadth, a uh, hard word to say quickly on a stream. But this is positive. This is, a, and we can see this right here. Uh, uh, as, as per a market notice on March 25th, the uh, London Stock Exchange has confirmed those wishing to list crypto ETNs, those uh, uh, the electronically traded notes, can apply from April 8th to April 15th. It also proposes May 28th as the first day of trading. The London Stock Exchange is set to initiate trading in Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, ETNs. From May 28th. So this is positive. This is this is that type of momentum that we want to see that will also buoy price action if we do get a drop because we have these types of things that people are going to speculatively, uh, there's going to be stronger speculative buying power in defense of levels when price does drop. Naturally, this has caused a buzz. ETNs could be considered the European equivalent American exchange traded funds. So similar to ETF. This move is not only seeds bull, uh, sends bullish signals to traders, but it also highlights the increasing appeal of crypto. This is the key phrase right here. Because we in our bubble, let me say this, we in our bubble right now feel like crypto is, it's everybody knows about it and we see all this data. How could people be against it? But we are in a crypto bubble here on crypto Twitter, crypto YouTube. We're very aware of what's going on. The mass majority of people on the, around the world have no real knowledge of what Bitcoin even is, let alone all these other altcoins that are in the crypto ecosystem. So when we see these ETFs launch and we see Larry Fink speaking positively, we have Kathy Wood out there touting positive, absolute, incredibly bullish numbers uh, into, 2020, uh, into 2030. And we also see now the London Stock Exchange that's going to be listing ETNs, electronic, electronic traded notes, these ETF versions in uh, London. We're starting to bridge that gap by increasing appeal because people are starting to trust it because there's names and brands and institutions that are participating in these products. The best is yet to come. If you are not stacking already or making sure that you're stacking on a regular basis, even if it's pennies on the dollar, this is what's going to set our future apart from the rest. This is what I'm all about right now is making sure I can participate in the greatest revolution in finance in history, the revolution in wealth. This is what we're doing right now. And we're seeing it right before our eyes. Now, going on to this next story, that's basically uh, in addition to this, we're talking, I don't know what that is there. Sorry. Uh, talking about bullish news for Bitcoin with the ETNs. We also saw, we also saw yesterday Peruvian Nilum Resources, which is basically a large uh, resources mining a company like gold. They mine gold, expressing intent to purchase basically about $25,000, sorry, 25,000, not dollars, 25,000 Bitcoin worth $1.7 billion at, at a discounted rate relative to current market prices. This is what OTC is. Buying OTC, when you've heard that phrase, over the counter, it means they don't want to just throw on an exchange on a market order for 25000 That would cause an immense amount of slippage and drive. It would affect the price. So what they do is bulk orders, essentially, like going to Costco. They uh, arrange for either, like a, for instance, a miner or an exchange that has an OTC desk, and they buy at a fixed price level. Uh, to get that entire amount uh, or even large groupings uh, of that amount at one time without affecting the exchange rate, you know, what we're trading on exchange, the price value. So this is going to be a speculative drive of bullishness, but overall that we're going to see more and more things like this. We can also see Dylan LeClaire posted about this yesterday evening. Nellheim Resources enters letter of intent to buy 24,800 Bitcoin. This is the point right here. A letter of intent, so subject to any terms, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 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 he said something else right here. Uh, essentially, this is going to be something that's going to drive the awareness and more of this type of behavior from corporate treasuries, from 
large institutions, from governments, from, I mean, we're going to even see, okay, oil and gas, we're already seeing them convert some of their burn off flaring, you know, basically extra energy that they've created that they have no way to harness. So they burn it off, converting to Bitcoin mining as well as, as well as people holding on their corporate treasuries. The, I'm talking the most bullish. I can't. The list of the bullish things that are happening right now in terms of the foundation that is not just a fixed concrete platform for us to build on. The foundation, let me say this right now. All this incredible bullish news that's coming out with corporate treasury stacking into Bitcoin, governments seizing huge amounts of Bitcoin with, uh, I mean, the, the capital flows from ETFs, London Stock Exchange, BlackRock, Fidelity. This is not building a platform, a fixed platform for us to go bullish. This is building an absolute slingshot. This is building an absolute slingshot trampoline to absolutely launch us to levels that we cannot even comprehend. There's going to be chop along the way, and I'm going to take advantage of that chop by stacking on dips. I'm not looking for sells probably for the next year. I'm looking for buying opportunities so I can ride off into the sunset into the future with a margarita and a martini in my hand because I dig what was necessary to prepare for my future. So if you want to know more about that, follow us for more because I'd love to have that margarita and martini with you right off into the sunset of this bullish explosion that's coming. I can get behind that. I hope you guys can too. Now, getting back here, we got to look at some TA. We got to look at some charts. We got to look at some levels. But my question to you right now is you're watching this. You might hate me. You might love me. You might, this might be your first time here. If it is your first time here, let us know in the live chat right here. But my question is, I looked at the data yesterday, about 55% of the people that watch this channel regularly are not even subscribed. So show some love, hit that like button, subscribe and join us in the fam. And we're gonna get into uh, two more things and then we're gonna dive into the charts and talk about what's going on. SEC requests judge Annalisa Torres to grant final judgment against Ripple. This comes on the heels also at the same time as this court case that we have going on right now with Coinbase and the SEC. There are huge implications on the Coinbase SEC uh, battle, as well as this, uh, this uh, ruling from Judge Annalise Torres, Judge Torres, in regards to Ripple. This may be the last pressure lid that's holding things together. And you know what's crazy right now? You know what's crazy right now is that the price action on the crypto market has exploded so high in 2024, early 2024, before the Bitcoin halving. Yet we have one of the biggest pressure lids on holding everything down right now with the Coinbase court case with SEC, as well as this uh, final ruling that is requested by the SEC uh, to figure out what's going on with the Ripple. Once we get clarity on these things, and I think it's more likely than not going to lean on the positive side of things, that pressure lid of uncertainty is absolutely going to propel this market to levels that we can't even comprehend. But if you're prepared, you get to ride these profits into absolute joy, excitement, and happy dances. Some people are still on the sidelines. Why the hell would you be on the sidelines of the best technological advance as well as community, as well as opportunity for your future. I mean, <laughs> are you not entertained? You better follow us for more so we can ride this dragon together. Now, I think we got to get into it because right here we can see that flow, that negative flow. This is right here. This is the ETF, the Bitcoin spot ETF flows. Got scary. These dips right here, this is the outflow. There was more outflows than inflows of these ETFs. But just like everything, when things go up, they have to come back to some level, whether it's just a, a retrace or an actual bear market. When things go down, they have to come back up. Similarly, we see this right here. Look, we had a negative flow, came back to positive. Didn't get all the way down to negative, just a little bit of a reduction. But then huge spike. And then look at this, a little dip. Huge spike. Oh, look at this, little dip. Huge spike. Each one of these consecutively has gotten larger. Now we got a bit more of a dip here than people felt comfortable with, which also whether this selling pressure is what drove price down or the uncertainty from the selling pressure, it doesn't matter. Price 
gave us a dip. It was about 18%. We've had many 20% dips in, uh, yeah, I think, five or six in this bull market so far since January 2023. But now, this is coming back to positive. The question is going to be, are we going to get a large inflow again? Especially, think about it. Yesterday, when the price went up to $71,000, $72,000, that is a promotional mechanism for this asset class. Why is that? Because when price levels go to, you know, 70,000 is an incredible round number. It's also an incredible number. $70,000, Bitcoin. So everybody thought it was, you know, about to crash back down and it, it pushes back up over $70,000. That gets covered on financial news media. It also gets covered on all these YouTube channels. It also gets covered by each one of us as individuals because we're so happy the price is up. We tell all our friends and family. It becomes a, uh, uh, not a reactive, uh, reflexive. It's a reflexive cycle. At highs is when most people start enter entering an asset because most people are buying the hope. They don't know to buy the fear like you do. Hopefully you all took a little bit of an advantage of that dip we just had. Maybe we'll get another one. But hopefully you took advantage of it and stacked into whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. It doesn't matter. What you're doing in your portfolio is going to have to be determined by your, your, what you want, your goals with your portfolio. But if you're not taking advantage of dips right now, why are you even in this market? And we can see this is flipping back to green as we can see right here. Now, we also see a little bit of a downer here, but it's a data downer. It's not an actual price action downer. It's a potential negative. Whale moves uh, $1.5 billion to Coinbase as uh, Bitcoin reclaims 70K. Okay, this is saying, you know, there's a lot of you know, uh, uh, inflows of big accounts from big players. Are they setting up to sell? Could happen. Remember, we have that CME futures gap down to 64. So whether we go to 75, 85, 100 right now, or we dip further, I know we're going up to those levels. So if we don't go there yet, that means I still have opportunity to stack. That's what this is about. So let's talk. If you guys and gals and every one of you here, uh, let's see how many likes we have. I can't, it doesn't tell me how many likes we have for some reason. My, my window doesn't show me. But uh, Alex, Alexandra G or Alex Green, let me know if we can get every single one of you to hit that like button right now. Hit that subscribe button. And remember, if you tuned in a little late, if you head over to the BitLab Academy page right here, we're doing a drawing at the end. If you, I'm going to put this in the live chat. If you retweet this and hit that like button, you will be entered to win $100 USDT, which we are going to be randomly drawing at the end of the show. But I want you all to be able to make some money, baby. Now let's do it. Let's talk about some of these coins in this market. Now we already covered a Bitcoin uh, we'll kind of tap on that again, just to just to look at what we're looking at, just to, just to give context for the rest of the market. This is a target right here, out of this inverted head and shoulders. This is what I'm talking about right here. You measure from this neckline down to basically the deepest part of the this head, shoulder, head, shoulder, and you take this, you extrapolate it out to the neckline there, and you can see the breakout takes us up here. We can actually move that down about 73, essentially. The target out of this sell-off here and this bullish reversal pattern takes us directly back. Actually, this would go right here, wouldn't it? All right, boom. Takes us directly back to essentially challenge previous highs. Funny how these things play out like this, isn't it? It looks like we've made a move up. This does not mean we're all good to go 100% up, up, up. Members only Discord stream. Uh, do we got a members only Discord stream today? Let me actually look. We do, uh, Alex has been doing some great members only Discord streams. We've had Josh, Josh and I have been doing quite a few. Uh, yeah, we do have one today at three, uh, tomorrow. A BitLab in indicators refresher lesson intro uh, for the BitLab members uh, in, the, in the academy. Sign up here. I'm going to do interested, boom, right there. I won't be there. I don't think, I'm gonna, I'll try and pop in. I'm, I'm interviewing Mark Yusko tomorrow for the channel. And hopefully that'll go up sometime this weekend. I do want to say though, uh, on the YouTube this afternoon, I, I did a uh, uh, I did a lesson with uh, this is not what I want to look at. I did a lesson with Taco yesterday. If you come here to videos, this crypto airdrop guide, this is a must watch. I mean, talk about how you can get some free money in this space. 
and some of that money just absolutely explodes higher because it's new projects, early entry, how you get involved with that, the whole guide, tools, resources. Uh, this is going to be going on today at 3 p.m. So make sure you come over here and uh, subscribe and hit the notification so you get notified when we go live with this today at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Now, Bitcoin, this reversal pattern, target right up to this top. Are we going to get there? Well, as it stands right now, we wanted to believe this was a bull flag, but now this flag portion is now about as wide as this is tall. This is looking weak. Currently, we can lean on the side of bullishness because this, even though this broke through this trend signal line, it bounced at this weekly view up. As long as we can bounce and stay above this, we can still lean on the, on the short term. This is a one hour chart. We can lean to the bullish narrative, a bullish bias. Once we lose this, we wanna watch on a, a, a retrace up. If we get rejected at that, that's telling us that this is coming down likely to close that, uh, that CME futures gap. And so let's just pay attention to that. We still have positive money flow. The stochastics have come down almost fully reset. They're down here at about 26%. The RSI got quite low here, down at 39%. What are we looking like on the four hour time frame? So, okay, four hour time frame, still positive money flow. Momentum is rolled over, but let's see what happens here because the bulls, the bulls did eat this back up. <laughs> Now we're gonna to wanna to see if this does come back down and test this $68,900 level. This is where the weekly VWAP is, this yellow line on the BitLab trading stack. See this right, right here, boom. This is gonna be our, if, if we lose this, that's what's gonna tell us, let's watch for a potential rejection or slice right back through. Now total, we wanna know what's going on with these altcoins, right? Well, let's kinda of come over to this chart right here and let's just remind ourselves what we're in store for. What are we in this for? We're in it for gains, baby. I'm in this to make some money. And because I know I want to make money in this market, I also know that means I have to be patient. So let me say that again. What are we in this market for? Gains. I want profit. Because I want profit, I know when I look at charts like this, this tells me, although it feels so good because we've had some big gains right in here, we have so much more to go. So I'm being patient with my activity at this level because I don't want to act incorrectly or on my emotions and lose capital or lose position. I'm looking for buying opportunities so that I can be in the best position to have the best gains. And we can talk about taking profits in several many months when the signals start to indicate that, but there's so much more in store as we see on this chart. Let's not get ahead of ourselves right now. This tells us right now it's time to be patient and right now it's time to look Right now, it's time to look for dip buying opportunities because there's so much gains to come if we can stay patient and stay prepared. You better hit that like. You better follow us for more. We're going to keep you on the right side of this trend. We've been dropping some gems in this community that have been performing so well, and I just want to make sure that you all perform well with your portfolios as well. So with that being said, let's get back over to this chart and talk about this. This is so far behind what we saw on Bitcoin. Remember, on Bitcoin, on Bitcoin, we had the price action come all the way up to here. On Bitcoin, the price action has broken its previous all-time high. This is showing us with the altcoins that we have not even gotten to that level. Altcoins tend to lag as the market. It tends to lag behind Bitcoin. Bitcoin kind of carves its way through the snow and then it gets to that open clearing. And then the altcoins follow behind it in terms of how capital flows. So this is telling us we got a lot of things that we need to sort of, uh, patience we need to, to mind right now. And we can see right here, we're essentially in a box zone. On This is just, we're getting signal for the broader altcoin market cap. Uh, all these different alts that we hold. Some will run, some will drop. We want to see as a whole the market running. We are coming right up into this with this V-shaped recovery. You could argue this is a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders as well. If we did that, that would be like this. Let's go ahead and move this out. Oops. Let's go ahead and move this out from the neckline. This is suggesting a pretty large pump in the overall market, uh, crypto, uh, altcoin market. If we can clear this level, we are not yet through this level. We are still kind of being held hostage. What we want to see on the altcoin market is for, look at this, bounce right on the weekly VWAP. If we come back down here, if we lose this, this may signal that the altcoins are starting to pull back. So when we look at Ethereum, very similar that we saw on Bitcoin, inverted head and shoulders, and look at the BitLab trading stack calling this perfectly. 
bullish signal right here on the same candle where we had high volume selling and then stopping volume signaling a likely reversal. In addition to that, stopping volume, bullish signal, and where did the price bounce at right on this pink line? What is that pink line? That pink line is that line we've had drawn all the way back here since uh, October 2022. Rejection. This kind of had a little bit of a deviation above, but we can see right in here, this price action came over here. And look at this. Rejection here, bounce here. And so what we want to look at right here, look at this. Five bullish divergences with a reversal signal, another reversal signal, and then this actually did reverse to the upside. Watch out. Because this market is primed to take advantage of the most people right now. And if you are acting irrationally, if you are acting on your emotions because you're excited or scared, you're going to lose money. You have to be emotionally agnostic to this and say, okay, what are they trying to trigger me to feel? You can, I still feel those things, but I say, okay, I'm feeling this way. I'm going to step away from the charts because I'm about to act emotionally. I ask, what's my strategy? What does the stop light action protocol say? Remember, we want to have one, two, three, four different things that really provide us context in terms of a good decision or not. You have a setup. You have a confirmation. You have a support of that confirmation. I like to have another support of that confirmation and then my trigger, right? So in this case, this did break out. This is looking like it's rolling over a little bit, but it's, it's having some support. Not only it's above the trend signal line, but also this weekly VWAP. This is telling me if we lose this level, there's two levels I'll be watching directly below this. If we lose this, I'm watching for a bounce. Uh, I'm, I'm watching for if it bounces at this 3,400 mark, which is this neckline uh, uh, trend line right in here. If we lose this, we're likely coming back down to retest this 3,165. Remember, when we were up here and I was, I was giving potential areas to the downside, people were like, oh, you're, oh my God, it's not going down. It's going, it's going to 6,000. And then what did it do? It hit every single level that we marked out. It's not always going to happen, but I always want to have an idea of what levels we're watching in both directions. So we just talked about the downside targets. If we're finding support here, and this is just a little bit of a shakeout, a little breather, and this starts pushing up, then my next level up, we can move this over right here. The next level up we're watching is basically the 3,700 range, not the specific level, but we see this rejection here, support here, support here, support here, support here, rejection here. So this is the next level we're watching to the upside. The next level after that will be up here, basically the $4,000 mark, 4,050, which is a previous range high. So we have our levels mapped out on Ethereum. What is AVAX doing? We already talked about it a little bit, but we got to talk more. This is still trying to chop people out. Look at this. Low. It's not a lower low, though. So low, lower high, higher low. Now from this range right here, because it's established, now we're going to look at this. Now we do have a higher high here again. We need to maintain a higher low structure here if we're considering this potentially going up. As it stands right now, this is looking fairly bearish. Why? Because this broke down below this trend signal line. Came up, rejected at it. Came up, rejected at it. We did break through it, and we're sitting here teetering on the edge of one, having a confirmed breakout to the downside. Why is that? Because we have this level, this uh, dotted line level right there, and we have broken below it, and we rejected on it. Now we came back above it, but it almost looks like a, like a deviation, potential setup for it to, to come back down. So let's be a little patient with AVAX. If this does dip, I'm going to be stacking into this because I do think AVAX is going to be one of the top performers of these layer one top ecosystem uh, smart contract platforms. Uh, I want to give everybody a shot right now if you're tuned in. Uh, I don't want to just do the coins that are on my list. I want everybody in the live chat right now to spam two coins that they want to see and whichever two I see the most of, we're going to do some TA on those right now. And while I'm waiting on all of you to spam your coins, this is when you do it. If you're a BitLab member with the BitLab with the badge next to your name, it's gonna it's gonna count a little more. But I'm still gonna see everybody's post here. I want to see everybody uh, dropping those in. And while we're waiting on that, I'm going to look at Solana because we gotta look at Solana. Solana. Oh, you know what? I forgot to come over here. Hold on one second. I have to boop 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 boop. boop. All right. Um, Solana. Lower low, lower high, higher low, 
it's trying to do work to break out, but we still here have a lower, barely have a higher. This is looking mixed signal. Why? Because we, we kind of have a rising wedge. God dang it. There we go. We kind of have a rising wedge here within Solana, but this can be easily, it's not a strong rising wedge. It's, we have higher lows, but this is, it's, it's more of an indeterminable sort of look that Solana has right here. Uh, we do have positive money flow, but the, the VWAP down here on the bottom, the BitLab trading stack, this uh, trend fuel is rolling over. If we can bounce here and start moving up, then maybe we're going to play that positive spread. As it looks right now, let's get down to the four hour. We can see that the price action is still above the weekly VWAP. If we lose this, then I'm watching for a test down here to 177, 179 sort of region. We could put a little box there just to hold ourselves accountable for tomorrow. If the price loses this level, this is where I'm looking for price to potentially come down to. If we lose that, then I think we're going to be testing these lows here, which is essentially this 160, this 169 range. Just kind of move that over. Now, boom. Put this here. Uh, change the color. Let's make that orange. There we go. If we're able to hold this level and we push up, and we're watching directly above our head. And that would be this target right here. Come on. That would be this target right here. We could put a little price. 199, basically testing that $200 mark again. Let's do the green. Color-coded. Bullish. Kind of neutral because this would still be bullish. If we bounced here, it would be a higher low. And then this is, uh, you know, the, the sort of bearish number if, if we're looking at that. Now I'm... Going over, I'm looking at all y'all's coins. Let me see what I'm seeing a bunch of. Okay, we see, uh, okay, so we just did so link, uh, beam, F FTM, Tia, Ada, beam. We gotta do beam, because beam is pumping. Let's do beam, uh, FTM, and then I'll do a couple more that you guys wrote in there. Uh, let's do link first, because link, uh, oh, link, I didn't even notice this. Link, a little bit of a breakout here. You know, look at that, inverted head and shoulders too. I think I noticed that yesterday, actually. Now I'm thinking about it. So this would be the target coming out of this. Would be up here at twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two dollars. Everything's kind of following what Bitcoin is doing right now. So if Bitcoin has a big sell-off. We'll likely see a pretty big sell-off. I'm not talking about a consolidation. If Bitcoin has a sell-off, especially sixty-four and then below sixty-four, then I think we're going to see a pretty. You know, you'll see a larger sell-off in, in many alts. So this is pushing up. This does look bullish. Let's go to the one-hour time frame. Okay, if we can hold right here on link, $19.90, $19.92 uh, sort of range, then this is looking good. Very good. This is still bullish coming all the way down to here. In fact, look at this. This uh, The weekly VWAP is right about where this previous range high was right in there, which is at $19.58. If we can hold above that, still playing the positive spread. If we lose this, then I think the price action is coming down to the 18 Oh, look at this. I just want to notice something. So look at this. This would be bullish for multiple reasons. If we can hold 1958, it's the top of this range, the weekly view op, and the top of this range. If we lose this, I think price is coming back down 1840s. And if we lose that, then we'll be going quite a bit lower. Um, but things are, you know, our target is up here at the $19. So let's do beam. I don't know if I've ever charted beam. I can't remember. Doesn't look like it. All right, so option T, let's get, or do turbo TA. Everybody hit that like button, show some love. All right, we're just getting some basic lines on this chart. So again, look, weekly view up, rejection down. Now we broke above it. It's, it's a lot of choppiness, but we got that reversal symbol here on the BitLab trading stack, move up. Chopping this back and forth with uh, here with the bearish, bearish and then bullish divergences, but reversal up, pushed up a little sell off. Where to, where did it find support? Right on the weekly view op. In fact, it touched it, look, and then launch up. We are right now in process of saying, is this gonna go higher or are we about to break back down? Why? High volume candle, high volume buying candle. How do we know that? This is a teal candle. You see on the BitLab intelligence, see how it's just, green these are different colors now it's teal it says there's a lot of buying pressure under this candle similarly we see on the on the uh 
Trend Fuel, green bars here suggest on the momentum that there was a lot of buying pressure as well. Now, the RSI did reject and is coming back down. Stochastics did bounce, and they're looking fairly flat. So there's some mixed signals here as to what's happening. We have the high volume, stopping volume, and then this subsequent reversal. The question is going to be right here. Let's get down to the 15-minute chart. The question is going to be right on this level that this is bouncing on. Not only the 20 moving average here on the BitLab trading stack. Oh, that's the trend, sorry, trend signal line. It's also this upper level of resistance. If we can, if we lose this, remember this isn't that big of a project. So if we lose this, which these smaller coins can get pushed around a lot easier. I'm watching for the bullish narrative to stay intact, to stay above the 3.6, 3.7 cents, 3.7 cents. This is a weekly VWAP right here. If we lose that, then I expect that we'll likely come down and test the bottom side of this, uh, this support down here, back down at 3.4 3 cents. Now remember, don't get frustrated if there's downside targets that you're like, I don't want it to go there. Well, you should. If you own it right now with what we saw coming, with this coming to most of the altcoins, the majority of the altcoins, especially if they're doing anything of meaning in the, and have communities and have people that care about the projects and they're developing, which should be all the coins, the, the, the standards of the coins you hold. If we see this, then we should look at a coin like this and say, I hope it goes down here so I can buy more cheaper. Low, you know, lower your average entry or get your last, if you bought much lower, get your last bit of DCAM before the price truly explodes. Now, what we, uh, FTM, Phantom was the next thing that we're looking at. Uh, FTM. Okay, man, this, this is, let's see. So this was telegraphing for a while. Sorry, this was telegraphing for a while that it wanted to move to the downside. And uh, John Dalton, in our BitLab community has been sharing charts on FTM for a, I'm talking like three months. Uh, let's go to scalps. He's, I mean, he's still in the scalp trade. This is from yesterday, but he called this back over here. He also called it all the way down here, which was, let's see, December is when he took the long and then he added to it here. Boom. So we, since yesterday, we've had this other leg up and an information. So we'll have to see if he's uh, updated or changed anything on that. I'll, we'll ask him. We'll share that in the Discord later. But we do see this is that move up, back down. And look at this. We have lost not only the trend signal line, but the weekly VWAP. The question's going to be on whenever this rises, whether it reverses from here or goes lower and reverses, we want to watch for the price action, whether or not, say it loses like this, whether or not it comes back into the VWAP and then gets rejected, that's saying they, the bears want to be in, co in control for the time being. Right now, we've only lost it. This could be a fake out and then come back up. How do I know that? Because we've seen it time and time again. We saw it right here, you see, and we didn't get rejected. We sliced through. You see here, fake out to the downside. We didn't get rejected. We sliced through. Same thing here. And then it just built momentum until it pushed higher and higher. So let's not get scared at this. Let's use the data to our advantage of if this moves back up towards this weekly VWAP and gets rejected, then on this, when this starts moving back down, if you're playing the short game, if you're scalping, if you're doing very you know, intraday trades, then on this move up, on the rejection, once it starts moving back down, that's when you can basically look to enter a short position and then target, you know, I would say some, somewhere like right in here would be one target. Why? Because we have a bounce here and a top here. The next target would be right here. Uh, where we have uh, yeah, this larger sort of top right in here, rejection right in here, rejection here, bounce right here. So these, these would be those two targets to the downside that I'd be watching. I'd be, I don't want to change the colors because I, I want to move quickly. Now, if we're able to push back up and take this out, initially I'd be watching right here, this $1.20 to $1.23 range, and then likely uh, uh, continue to move to the upside. Uh, I saw a couple of people uh, write uh, arrow in here. So let's take a look at arrow. I did take $2,000 profit yesterday and I rotated it into, what did I rotate it into? Oh, I rotated it into mint layer. Uh, I rotated it into mint layer. Mint layer and I think I added more Alex Labs as well. Yeah, I think I added four or $500 to Alex Labs. And then uh, 1500 to Mint Layer. Uh, and so Mint Layer is down right now. Does that bother me? Not at all. 
Not even at all. If this drops it further, I'll add more to this position. Um, but I left a huge amount of uh, arrows still in here. You see aerodrome. I still have eight thousand dollars in aerodrome. We started with like a thousand. Okay. This is doing very well. <laughs> Remember, I started this alt portfolio February seventh. Okay. This is the power of picking strong plays and having regular DCA, doing anything you can to get more capital to throw into the market uh, in smart ways, making sure you can always pay your rent, you can always buy food, you can always buy gas for your car, you don't over leverage yourself so much that you can't afford life because you believe in crypto so much. You need to have a balance of having your life in order, but also doing everything you can to put capital into this market. And by the way, this is not financial advice. I'm giving you an example of what I'm doing to uh, take advantage of life-changing wealth. So Aerodrome, this has been pushing up very strong. Now, this is on the four-hour chart. What I'm initially looking at is this $1.25 zone. Why? Because look at this. Push up, it found support, found support. If we cannot find support on here, then we may be making a move for a little bit of a correction because this has been moving like a mofo. This is where we got in, 23 cents. But all the way from back here, look at this move. This is not a small move. That's a 17X, 18X. From when? From February, let's see. Is that right? Yeah, from February, the end of February, to now it's 18X. So it wouldn't be the end of the world if this cooled off a little bit. And if it does, I'm going to be adding to my position. SEI, I saw a couple, I saw two people write SEI, so I want to look at this. This is a coin I actually want to layer some into. Um, in fact, I was trying to layer some stuff in the market today, and I have the money in my account, but Coinbase keeps saying, uh, you don't, uh, you're, you have insufficient funds. So I don't know if it's, maybe it's not available in there yet or something. But uh, it's okay. Maybe the patience is going to serve me. Because look at this, comes down, it broke through the weekly VWAP, rejected the trend signal line, right now is the decision point. If we're able to bounce here and then actually clear this, the next level up we're looking at is 90 cents and then it'll likely be a pretty strong move to the upside. If we do lose a weekly VWAP, then I'm looking ultimately right here, 75 cents, which is where we've had bounce, uh, bounce regions as well as these previous tops and all this over here. I'd be looking basically 75 to, to 77 cent range uh, for a potential... Uh, uh, stacking into that stacks we got to look at as well uh, okay we can delete this now because that did not play out sometimes you do a, a pattern as an idea it doesn't work it's okay this market changes every every single second so right now we've lost the weekly vwap see what i mean this is on the 12 hour let's go to the four hour we've lost the weekly vwap we shot right back up and we've lost it again we're kind of deciding whether or not this is going to give us a better opportunity lower this has been running the last few days. I mean, this this move was, you know, not a small move. That's a 53% 50, move to the outside. So right now, this is looking like it's rounding a little bit. It wouldn't be out of context for this to give another opportunity lower. We do have a flat bottom here. If we lose this level, essentially, I'd be watching right here, option J, where I'm looking at this line right here on the BitLab trading stack. It shows you where the volume switched from buying volume to stopping volume. It also outlines exactly where this top region was. But also because of the volume, it kind of zeroes it in for you. So I'd be watching if we lose this line, uh, potentially coming down here to the 324 sort of range. Near has been crushing it. Oh, God, Lee, this is one of our better performers. See, this is where we got it. Look at this W formation. Boom, got right there, pushing to the upside uh, from this move right here. This is uh, represented all the way to the top was a 222% move on spot, not on leverage. Now, look at this, push up, a little bit of a bull flag. This looking like it's trying to break up, but maybe it needs to come back and test some levels. So let's go ahead and double click here. There we go. So, yeah, this is ugly. So break out of the symmetrical triangle. The target on this would be just like this. You measure this, the width there. And you put this to the upside. We can actually do it uh, here. Let's do it a way that makes sense for price action. And look at where the price went to. Boom, right, essentially right to that target. So let, let it cool off a little bit. Right now, it's still sitting, look, right at the juncture of the trend signal line and the weekly VWAP, which is 754 right directly below us. 
if we lose this level, I'd be watching for, let's see, I'd be watching for this level right here. If we lose, we're watching this level right here, uh, which is also you know, this top. So if we lose this, I'd be watching for a move maybe down into the sevens and then continuation. As it stands right now, this is actually looking fairly bullish other than the fact that it is also a rising broadening wedge. See that right there? These tend to break bearish, but it may be a quick move before it launches. I'd be watching right here. Option J. Why? We have a bounce here and a, a reject. Oops. We have a bounce there as well as a rejection. See, rejection, bounce. So this would be the bullish uh, breakdown, meaning it would break down and launch from here. If we come down and lose basically 729, the next level down will be seven. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm feeling. I think it's time to draw a $100 USDT giveaway. So let me go ahead and log into my uh, BitLab Academy page. And the last opportunity for you, if you haven't done it yet, head over to BitLab Academy at Academy BitLab. This is the pinned post on that page. Come here, hit this retweet, hit this like button, and uh, you're going to be entered to, uh, to win that drawing. I'm doing it right now. So let me refresh this page. Uh, okay. Comment, comment picker, there we go. Now, authorized app, get it in, baby. Now, while I'm doing this, I want everybody, I want everybody to tell me, if you had $2,000 right now, if you had $2,000 right now, and you had to add a coin that you don't have yet, let me know in the comments, what coin are you like, I've, I've been wanting to get that, I just I haven't been able to, what coin would you get? Even if it was a, a 500, what would you stack it towards? What risk play would you take right now? I'm curious what you guys say and comment down below if you are watching this later. Uh, so let's come back over here to, where's it at? Right here. Now copy this page. I'm gonna refresh this. Just to make sure everybody is participating. All right, 56 people. Well, we got 280 people here and you guys can't come and enter to win $500. Uh, uh, sorry, not 500, $100 USDT. All right, now what we're going to do here is once we draw this, uh, I'm going to, we're going to reach out to you on Twitter and also I want you to get in the Discord. By the way, if you guys want to learn how, you know, to really read these charts, read on-chain data, trading fundamentals, candles, candle patterns, all this, we still have this great deal going on right now and it's on the link. It's on this link right here. You can sign up for 30 days for free. Take advantage of this. This is about to be taken down. It is at lab.bitlabacademy.com. I can, I can type it, but lab.bitlabacademy.com forward slash Josh. There we go. Lab.bitlabacademy forward slash Josh. Sign up right here. Once you sign up, check your email and your spam and junk folder because there's a two-step process that once you do it, you automatically get all the, the premium uh, channels added with our watch lists, with our scalp trades, chart requests. You can come, you know, uh, you know, the calls Josh is making and setups, uh, the, all the alpha I'm sharing, uh, the member streams that we do in here for the BitLab premium members. And you do that all at lab.bitlabacademy.com forward slash Josh. Now let's go ahead and pick that winner. Everybody hit that like button. Show some love to the channel, subscribe, and let's see who won that $100 USDT. Uh, and it is going to be right here. Boom, link to tweet. Uh, here we go. Get Twitter data. Let's see. You've reached the maximum number of retweets for free users. You can quickly learn how to upgrade to premium. Come on. All right. You know what we're going to do? Mm. How, how should we do this how should we how should we draw the name hmm. everybody everybody put out a uh the first person that puts a number one to 56 that's that's the number that we're going to draw let's see it we'll count together 30. Justin W says 30. All right, Justin W, let's do it. Now we got to count. Okay, view engagements, repost. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Lens at Lens 3A. I'm going to follow you right now. If you are watching right now, I'm going to send you a message. Uh, you have to, uh, yeah, I'll follow you on my, my page as well, uh, Kelly Kellum. But we're going to get in touch with you. $100 USDT. Big love to you. I appreciate you all. Everybody get in the Discord, post some charts, share some thoughts, ask some questions. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Stay tuned for this afternoon at 3 p.m. for the Crypto Airdrops Guide video. It's a great, there's so, it's about 40, 40 minutes or so. Uh, uh, interview that I'm doing with Taco, breaking down where you can find an airdrop, some airdrops you could be doing right now, some strategies. I'm telling you, you got to watch the video. I love you guys, and uh, I appreciate all y'all's love and support. I appreciate each and every one of you. Let me make sure I did not miss any super chats. I did not miss any super chats. Everybody's so focused today. I love you guys, and uh, let's get it. Adios, muchachos. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for coming. Thank you for always tuning in. Hit that like button, sucker. Take advantage of this deal while it is still live. 30 days for free. The BitLab Premium Discord charts, signals, trade setups, private member streams, watch lists. Man, we're going to get you in the know on the right side of profits. Head over to lab.bitlabacademy.com forward slash Josh. We love you. Hope you all succeed in this market. That's what this is all about. Tools and resources. Adios, everybody.